let's talk about the lost continent of Mu. Many people have heard of it, and they wonder what it can it consists of. Well, uh, modern archaeology and wacademia, of course, don't say that it exists, just like Atlantis, of course, or anything that could have equated to it in any way. But what they do have, that's the exact same thing, is the Sunda land. And what we're looking at here is Sunda land. And so there's Sunda and Sahul. Now, Sahul, you would know as Australia. And Sunda is the area of Sumatra, Java, and Barneo, and Bali, and the islands that contain in there off the Malay Peninsula. And so you can see the difference between the gray area and the white area. And the gray area was mainland extensions by lowered sea levels during the ice ages as in plural and so whenever I was a kid you know I'm studying about tigers and everything and I found out there were tigers in Bali and then later whenever I got into the fish thing I started ordering from Bali and here at our zoo here they have these tigers of Bali exhibit and they're different and there's Sumatran tigers too that are here they're just a hair different too though from each other and then there's tigers that are off through India and so on that people are aware of too but why is there tigers all the way to Bali and then there's not any where else? Well, they have this thing they've declamated as the Wallace Line. And he's a naturalist who came through the area and stuff and realized that a lot of the plants and animals and things never made it across this line. And at that time, they weren't thinking about the Ice Age having the sea so low and everything about it. But it still showed up. Now, Weber came and checked it all out, and he said there are other stuff that are some of the things that mix, and they go as far as this other line, the Weber line, Wallace line, then Weber line, and it cuts through, and then, so it leaves out these islands up here, and what we know as Erie and Jaya, or New Guinea, and the area around Australia. Australia is connected to... Uh, Tanzania or uh, Tasmania and so uh, another thing that's odd if they would just go down some 80 foot more that would let these islands connect and that would make this connect all together too and this and this and there would only be a slight part running in in a few places and so it would pretty much make it almost across but they figured out now there still be a couple of gaps and you'd have to have some type of boat to have got over here. These islands are not in question in here, but they're showing a couple of them as being grayed around them because they know they grow a whole lot bigger because there's coral reefs all around them in a shallows situation. So no matter what, if they can find that it's just a couple of hundred feet deep, no matter what, that's exposed. Like the balmy area of Florida where you can go off of there and there's a shelf that falls off after a while but there for a long ways it's blue ocean and everything it's because it doesn't get quite that deep it's like where they film Flipper but so this Sunda Islands let's just look at this uh, Sundaland also known as the Sundayak region is a biographical region of Southeast Asia corresponding to a larger landmass that was exposed throughout the last 2.6 million years. Now this was during periods when the sea levels were lower and this is of course through different ice ages and what we call the Pleistocene. Right? And it dies off at 11,600 years ago or 12,000 if they want to be kind of vague about it and so on and they've realized the younger driest event and everything goes along with it and all this knowledge is getting stronger towards that younger driest event and things happening and they've talked about ground rebounding and coming and sinking down and so is there a possibility that this area was up 80 foot higher at the time and after the ice age pressure came off this went back down in some way 
Well, supposedly they say no, but what they'd have to do is go out in the edge of that gray, right in the edge of the gray and blue, and do core samples and see if there were any corals and stony corals growing because they grow within 100 foot of the surface. All corals grow within about 300 foot of the surface, short of feather dusters and certain things like that. And anything deeper than that's going to have to grow on, you know, deep thermal vents and crap like that or be a filter feeder exclusively and sponges and stuff like that. And that's not necessarily a coral builder. But if you get to the best coral calcating building corals that make up limestone rock that build up the reef and live rock and coralline algae doesn't start growing until it's about 80, 60 foot from the surface and helps out. The corals grow it up till they live and die and then that starts growing like layers of pain as more corals live and die and it raises up more to the surface. So they just have to check that. And I don't think anybody's throwing a large amount of money at it at this point because what we're going to talk about is Ganang Padam. It's one of the areas that we can look at and go, well, here's some conspicuous things that show you. Recently, I did one on Tartaria, and I have no idea why, but I had a uh, picture pulled up where they're in Borneo Islands over here, and it is a picture of a huge bell that's been made long, long in the past. And there's these weird stories all about it. And if you've been with me for a while, you've seen it. And that's up here in Borneo. But, uh, so this is during the last ice ages, it would become fully connected and then separated and then exposed and connected and then back in between. And so animals were able to make it all through here, including that tiger, to a point. They'll have a closer-up picture here in a minute. It includes the Malay Peninsula, though, and the Asian mainland, as well as the large islands of Borneo, Java, and Sumatra, and Bali. But then it cuts off at Limba Strait, what's known as Limba Strait, before Timor and islands like that. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, the Java Sea, Gulf of Thailand, portions of South China Sea even, where I used to get some of my corals from. And this whole area of landmass equates to at least 1.8 million square kilometers of land. To give you an idea of how that works, basically, um, so uh, in a minute we'll go into that. So this Wallace line and so on, and they looked at New Guinea and things like that, and they figured elephants, monkeys, apes, tigers, tapirs, and rhinoceros had led through that area, and only certain ones had gotten to certain points, and all these plants that go along with it that might have been able to transport their eggs in some way or seeds in some way over short distance, but long distance couldn't make it, and there are breaks in here of primordial islands that don't have the same contents on them. It's how they got the breaking of the Wallace line and the others. But uh, let's just go back to this picture here for a second. So to give you an idea of what they're talking about here, just in this picture, for as it goes out the picture in the top, it's still quite wider than the island that's there, or the peninsula, sorry, Malay Peninsula, that's there. But you can see the amount of area that's in there. But don't think about that for a second. I just wanted you to say that this whole area is bigger than all of Australia. You know, what? Uh, well, okay, let's just do something real quick here. Let me get my pointer. Let's take the idea of coming in here. And we'll take this whole area except for that little blob right there at the end and cut it off. And now what we're going to do is just scoot it inland and set it inside like a, like a puzzle piece right there. Now we've still got that big blob that was on the end where it says islands, right? I'm going to save that along with that big blurb all across the top, except for over here with this little neck part comes out. This will be easier for you to do. Just take this and this whole piece right here and down and set it inside the continent. Take the edges there and set it inside the continent. Take the whole thing and set it inside the continent. Take that big chunk right there, set it inside the continent. You with me? Take that big chunk that we didn't mess with just a minute ago and stick it down off in this corner. And now we've got this corner full and it's kind of full over to here. It's full all the way through here. A little rim around there and this is a whole lot fuller right through here. So we still got some good area, don't we? All right, well, let's just take some of this chunk right here. And if you'll think about it and you go put it into there, 
this is going to end up, along with all the little caches that make it, to where people say, that's as big as Australia. It's as much land mass, pretty much, as Australia has. And that's only supposed to be counting the Manay Peninsula, which I guess goes a little higher than the picture, and and uh, it doesn't really show in here, but hmm, let's see, can't get it to do it. If you look at the little picture of it, it comes up right there at the top, and it gets real wide, and there's that little island, there's that whole big chunk there. Man, you start throwing in chunks like that, and this thing is all full. And so it's a huge landmass. It's as big as that. But of course it's cut into pieces. Well, not really. That just makes Malay Peninsula and the islands and Thailand and things hook up to the Sumatra and Borneo and Java and all the way down through Bali all hooked up together as one. And so is Irian Jaya or New Guinea and Sahul or present day Australia. So, uh, during the last glacial periods of the last uh, 2 million years, approximately 2.6 million years, is what we've been going through ice ages, okay? So, they have that down. I want to show something here. Elephant, monkeys, apes, tigers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last glacial period. Now, we've looked at a few different versions of this before. But they tell you that last glacial period ends at the Younger Dryas. Now this thing's been redone. That other one I was on redone. That's the reason I'm jumping on some of these. Some of these wiki articles, all of a sudden, I used to get on them and go, man, there's all this other stuff. Now they're like, hmm, here's that stuff. So people are putting it in there. And you can look down in the, in the deals. And these are all the people writing papers and doing stuff that had been going on. It's just, I don't know who's helping to edit all this in. They leave out some things, but uh, yeah, they, they cover it pretty well. So when we look at this last glacial period, it's kind of a weird picture here, but what we have here is the Emnian period is the last one, and so it has the heartbeat of the last warm period, and if you look across, that equals what we have now here, the warm period, right? And so it toppled down and then it fell. And then it kind of th 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 and it hit the bottom. And then it th 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 thump, and then it hit the bottom again. And people have said this might have been a volcanic events and things going through here. AIM-21 might have been a, another meteor strike, or it could have been this, or it could have been that. But the thing is, is a lot of it got wishy-washy and all washed up and smeared over like somebody painted on a canvas. And then they smeared all over it, and then they painted another picture on it and then they smeared it all over it and then they painted all over it and they smeared it all over it and then they painted the Mona Lisa and they're saying up under there a couple of levels deep there's some real interesting crap if you could ever figure out how to get it back to the way it was but let's see here to there's here's the younger driest spike and so it's showing it here younger driest spike now that's just barely in the thing but there you got an arrow going in there and so it was it was traveling up at this angle and fixing to be warm just like it is and then all of a sudden piff and it's gone and just out of this picture you can see there where it turns purple right and down here at the bottom you can see where it does it too um let me see if i can do this do, 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 do. is that a little better well it was So now we can see that it's actually purple up there now, and if we look at the corresponding data, it was a whole lot warmer now, i.e. bag, it was a whole lot warmer than it is now, in fact even through all the 6,000, 4,000 BC, 4,500 BC, and it drops, and then it comes back, and then there's spikes up and down, but look how much lower I am now than all of that, if I chop that off, that grass would be mowed, boy. And then look at this whole peak of where it came out of the last one. And we're going to blame that on cow farts and people and everything. So, again, whenever they talk about all this crap, it's just it's just really fear-mongering and everything else. But what they aren't talking about is the thing that's right there. 
that's the Younger Dryas event, and the comet hit us and stuff, and it uh, caused all kinds of things. It looks like there's a volcanic event that was going on simultaneous. Well, we've shown that it's spread out over, a, some people say, 850 years. Other people say over 1,200 years, somewhere between there, because you have a 250 to 400-year float. And you can go maximum minimum and try to get as far away, or you can try to get as close as possible. But, of course, you're getting a pegged out region of time, and it's based on that right there. And nobody's really caring about that. And that's the problem, because every time it happens, everything gets smeared down to nothing just about, and we have to restart over. And we've gotten going so good now, we're on the edge of Star Trek, somehow holding ourselves back right now, just waiting for something to screw up. There was a, there has been nine meteors that have come past Earth within the circumference of the moon like a grazing shot that would have taken out more than any major city any like London, no, 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 even the outskirts of London, all those little names you know of the boroughs, no, it's gone. New York is no, 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 no. I mean, even the fallout of that, and it's Vermont's just what, no, no. No, 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 no. Things that would have done that. Things that give magnitude to the order of something like a Tangusta event, and that you're hoping it comes at an angle and blows up. I'm just not, not trying to be a fear-mongering type person though whenever I'm doing this because oh well, what can I get you to do well if we don't pay attention you never know it might come like a thief in the night anyhow so this all comes about and then homo sapiens were confined to the lower latitudes and used tools comparable to those by neanderthals in western and central eurasia during uh time in denisovans and homo erectus in asia right and near the end of the event homo sapiens migrated into eurasia and australia archaeological uh and genetic data suggests that the source populations of paleolithic humans survived the last glacial period in sparsely wooded areas and dispersed throughout areas of high primary productivity while avoiding dense forest cover. Well, that was where all the animals got trapped into. And, of course, there's stories about bad things in the forest. And you know what's in the forest near you, but whenever you start to get far away, you don't know what's there. And there were, you know, cave bears and lions and tigers and bears on my. So... Sure, uh, you can understand that, but man, got, man tamed the forest, he tamed the beast and stuff, and uh, I've seen lion tamers and tiger tamers right now, but uh, that's not really so nice for you have to kind of really stay on top of them and treat them like shit so they pay attention to you and give you respect, and that's not real cool. So let's drop that idea. So 12,800 years ago, the Younger Dryas event, so they can be off by 200 years and still peg it. Last year, it ends about 11,550 years. Okay, so they're, they're, they're even getting more correct than 11,006. They're going, yeah, it's edging on the 550. Every time we see it, it's not right on the line. It's just right, you know, whenever you're full and you're half full of gas and it's straight up. Well, it's just, it's on the edge of that. It's... 49%, yeah, it's right there. So, and here's one artist's rendition of the way that this would look. Now, conspicuously, sadly, I can't get this thing to spin around for you, but if I could, you could might notice that there's a whole lot more across North America. In fact, it's down midway on North America here, but way out in the Midwest, it fails off. There's not any right there. And also, if you look here, this whole area we know of as Russia and stuff, above the Himalayas, anything up in there, and if you ever played Risk, the game, we're talking about Kamchatka Peninsula and Yakutsk and these areas up here, if you know what I'm talking about, and Siberia, basically, and there is nothing running right there. You can see it's 
run near you go right to what ends up being Alaska so what they have figured out now though is that the Atlas Mountains had a whole bunch had a glaciers all running through it they had some in Algeria and of course Kilimanjaro and places like that they had glaciers running on it and, and uh, man if you just look back at the uh let me see here do we have anything else here so if you'll just look at the way this thing pegged back and forth oh that's so much better so if we just look at how that pegged back and forth i want you to notice something first of all that whatever happened before the last ice age which was 110 108,000 years ago 108 It was a whole lot harder, but we start to lose all data off of that. And then it's back to another ice age. And it looks like we went through short warming periods and longer ice ages. Like 40, 45,000 years of good and 108, and then 40, and then 108. So everybody's squished down in Middle Earth. That's what Mediterranean means is Middle Earth. But you look when it comes out of the Younger Dryas there and it pegs up and almost touches the G of Greenland. Now, that's way back here coming out of 20,000, which we're about to talk about in Gadang Padang. But right here, 11,006, right on that line, peg. Yeah, I got it. There it is warmed up to a point and then all of a sudden spike right here next to it and it goes back down cold as hell some registers right in here show you that it dips down as low as this and then has to climb back up but in doing so it climbs up and it hits the G and then if you'll notice it actually falls down so I don't know what this they keep talking about how you know, the world's big around and it's going to blow up and that's all there is to it. We only have 12 years, so about seven left now. But if you went off Dippy's first thing, we were negative six years and dead all. All of us are dead. But uh, I swear, that that doesn't... Okay, now if we were getting hotter, I swear the end of that shouldn't be like that. I would be expecting to see something that looked like that. And I don't see that. I see that. Now one thing that's thrown off data and everything is that in the last ice age, there's one thing, but then there's a mini ice age that we had through the times of Napoleon and stuff, and that reglaciated a lot of this stuff, but it melted back real quick. It wasn't strong and strengthened with it and everything, and so it melted back. And when we started checking it out, they were melting back, and we're like, oh no, and look how fast it's going. Well apparently now we're probably back about like we were right before that reglaciation was going on in a lot of places people are saying but people don't want to hear that no it should be going the other way shouldn't it shouldn't it be looking like that what's it all limp like that for that ain't doing it for me no i didn't I, in fact, if you look, the high point here is under the low point. Look, look at where I go. Under the low point. I, well, let me get up to it. Uh, oh, under the low point all the way from here. So, 9,000, 8,000, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Oh, it's, our highest point is still below their lowest point. So what? Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. So, how was Moo doing back then? Well, it's tropical, and it, it was flourishing like hell. So let me get out of this here real quick, and I think there was something else I was going to show you here, that uh, Patagonian ice shelves, Western New Guinea, uh, uh, Great Escarpments, Kilimanjaro, and so on, deglaciation, and... Uh, oh, da -da 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 repeated in some places 44,250 to 10,680 so we got things right there that's that's right there the numbers are getting much more fine oh by the way i'm sorry for zipping here for you but uh 
they've got a lot on this and they've got a lot of people cashing in on this thing now and these are people that are writing the papers and doing the thing so you might want to look into it I don't read the whole thing to you but uh, where is it last edited 19th July this year so just in the end of last month it's been re-edited that other one also has been re-edited since the last time we talked about anything before because I had to mention things that's what we were talking about in it but uh, so here's Europe during the last glaciation and so you can still see that there's a whole lot here but then you have this Alps idea here that's breaking up but are, are you know just in this broken spot here and of course here and then half of Britain is covered over here's Iceland a lot of people believe that that and these islands would start solidifying in of course and running across but this is all connected together well this dogger land in between these two areas once that comes up is land in fact there should be some poking out if that's the way it's shaped right now but you also notice how what I was saying earlier how it goes up here and up into Cham Kamchatka and all this area above Afghanistan and there there is no glacier there and then odd compared to what North America looks like during that time so uh, yeah and the alpine glaciation they call the worm and it has to do with the dragons and ice dragons and things like that I'd like to get into that part of the story because you know I'm all about that but we're gonna go on we're gonna come out of the last glaciational period here and uh, so what was I gonna look at Sunda Island and Gunung Padang. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. I just want to get key points for this has been re-updated. It's a megalithic site in Kampaka village is located six kilometers south of Lempigan railway station and 30 kilometers or 19 miles southwest of Kianjur Regency in West Java province of Indonesia. If you were with me last year we talked about Krakatoa east of Java and it's like no no it's it's west but apparently that didn't sound as cool back in the days when people were talking about there's an island out there that time is forgotten in Komodo dragons and King Kong and things like that so it has been claimed that the largest megalithic site in southeastern Asia, controversial carbon dating, still controversial, but this is being looked at right now. Results from the site suggest it was built in four different eras, first being claimed as far back as 20,000 BC. Archaeologist Harry Truman Simanjek, so he's been named after Harry, suggests that the site may have been built much more recently, perhaps sometime between the 2nd and 6th centuries common era. Well, I think they realized that the top part was reset, and people had done something there then, and so you say that's an occupation, but then they did core sample drilling in there. They got a few different readings, and so that made people like Robert Schock and a few people came out, and they got stuff and did a few readings, and then they dug through the deeper part of it into the core part of it, popped into a hole that they have found, and got a reading at like over 7,000, but Robert Schock's went to like 14. I think, it, I think it'll tell you here. And so they're getting all these readings off of stuff. And uh, so this thing is an artificial mound. Now, it's a somewhat unique. But it's like Nan Madal in being made out of a little octagon shaped pre volcanic material that comes up in a throat and then cools off in a certain way, like the Devil's Tower here in America's, but also the Giant's Causeway that we know about and everything. And so it's, uh, let's see, similar to Nan Madal, and they show you here, and it's built with those pieces there with it. They might have been able they might have taken and snapped one and thrown one on another one and got it to break and would use them like that but they're set up in squares and it really looks like somebody built a log cabin but they're doing it out of volcanic material that's all hex shaped 
And people have gotten in there looking at it real close and they realize that they made sure they picked the flat side and they and due to the way the top is built, the next one on it is so and so and so. And that's the reason these things haven't toppled in any way, real shape or form. Also, by the way, the edges of all this is Nanmadal is sunken into water. And they say, well, why would they build it all in the water? Well, hold on. What if it was built back whenever there wasn't necessarily water right there? Just close. How long ago was that? They don't want to go there. They don't want to go there. But there's also Barobadur, there's, um, which is a terrace site. They've got Machu Picchu that they're comparing, comparing it to and the terracing and the way that it was built. And they say that there are five known terraced monolithic pyramids in Indonesia, all of which are Hindu sites built during Hindu Buddhist era. And we talked about Buddha and Gautama Buddha. Other being Kandy Kathak, Labat Kathung Temple, Pagung Rayardo, and Kandy Suk. So let's see if you've got a picture here. No. Got a picture here? Yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a step pyramid. That definitely looks... I was to tell you that we're in Sumeria. It looks kind of like that, but no, it looks more like ones in Mexico, huh? Same thing, except for Sumeria is usually mud bricks, and this, is, of course, is stone. Hmm. Very similar. Huh? Hmm. Show you how this stuff gets around, doesn't it? Yeah, those people got around. You know, the Bible talks about how they came from the east and settled in the land of Shinar, and one makes you wonder. How far east are you talking about then? So you look at these stones that are here, and there have been places that they are laid out, and they're making flats like this. And so they've checked in the local things, and they go, well, people were here six or 800 BC, uh, AD. That's great, but you're on top of a hill that was man-made. It's kind of like a covered-up-with-earth pyramid made of these things. And in fact, the cool shit around here at the top has all been toppled down. And somebody came and occupied it for a while and set some of it back up in 6 or 700 A.D. It's another picture here they've got. So you can see it going up as the pyramid that's there, but you're already standing on the pyramid, by the way. You're not at ground level. You're not level looking out and then up. You're on, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes. And they've built little temples and little things and stuff on it, but... They're saying, well, the heart of this thing is a pyramid, and it's like a step pyramid. And the hump in the bottom of it that's got this cavity in there is dating at 20,000 B.C. Here's how calderas form. Here's another picture from up on top of it, and you can see so it's of the higher places that are here. But it's been built up to that huge height. Also, all these trees, there was no trees on this thing in ancient sight. All this has happened since then. This thing was bare naked and a pyramid at one time. And uh, here's looking across at other valleys, and you see weird humped hills, and it makes you think, maybe we ought to dig into that hill right there. Or that one right there. Or that one right there. The only problem with this area is the way the soil gets so acidic from vegetation and the rains, and it peats and goes into it that bones don't last 10,000 years. You'd be lucky if it did. It'd have to be a pretty dry chamber inside of there to have anything inside of it. And uh, so let me tell you about what happened out of this. Um, the Sudanese people considered it to be a sacred site and everything, and they were all working with it. And then uh, the Department of Antiquities got in the middle of it, and all of a sudden they didn't like his research and everything, let's see if I can find where it says it. Uh, so somebody said that uh, it's not a man-made pyramid and human structures at the site are less than 3,000 years old. Only exploratory research is done. That too by Indonesian uh, geologist Danny Hillman Nawajaya, or Hillman they call him, not by the archaeologist or volcanologist. Well, we don't need a volcanologist. This can be the Giant's Causeway from 30,000 B.C. or 300,000 B.C. and they still took the rocks of 300,000 B.C. 
and did them. Nobody's saying that it spit up out of it, flump, and landed on the ground like Lego houses, like little log cabins, are we? So that doesn't matter, but the volcanologist got in the middle of this, by the way, and some archaeologists here. And he's telling you that it spans four area, eras worth of time, and it goes to at least 12,500 years before the present. Man, we keep heading on that, don't we? And uh, so uh, uh, one of the other digs, only three or four meters deep, gave readings of 6,500 before present, as well as found artifacts at the surface dating to 4,800 years before the present. So in other words... They're saying, well, it's almost 3,000 years old. And he goes, here's 48 on the surface. Well, and we dug here, and it's 60, 65. Oh, well, well uh, yeah, and this other thing showed 12.5 at 49 foot, 8 to 10 meters. What? And he claims around, uh, it can go back as much as 20,000 B.C., so into the height of the last ice age in area and in Mu and around 9,000 years ago humans wrapped its slope around Andalus, uh, andesite columns around 7,000 years ago the site was renovated once more and they added parallel layers of stone columns around 3,000 years ago a new group covered the structure in soil Geoelectric survey by Hillman showed the presence of chambers below the surface top, man-made stone structures, carbon dating of glue, or a cement-type substance between the columns in the core drilling samples taken by Hillman, which he claims uh, not a natural material based on chemical analysis yielded 13 to 23,000 years old in different samples. He claims to have found man-made through some of the chambers which yielded radiocarbon dates of 6500 BC and so that's in that other chamber that they found. Now that got Shock interested who studied the site and he reported that the human history of the site began at 14,700 BC by his ratings before the end of the last glacial period in 9700 BC so 95 97 they're going about that but 147 he won't go near 20 or 23 like it well he didn't know about that drill they didn't do that that's whenever they did the other ones so they tell you here that widespread um, which overlaps with the tumultuous end of the last ice age, rapid global warming, widespread wildfires, heavy torrential rains, and catastrophes raged the surface of Earth significantly, affecting this site, and Gobekli Tepe and others, because it too was buried. And now they're comparing it to a site like this about the same time, and it was buried, and it was built, and oh, it looks like it's gone to crap because of earthquakes and stuff, but... Hell, Krakatoa is not too far away, and yeah, there's been a lot to go through there. Amazingly, Gobekli Tepe is still held together all in it, holding it up. The ground around it. It didn't slide down and just mush it all flat. So there's criticisms here, and the guy's saying 12,000, 20,000 years old, blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to read this to you, but... So this guy tells you, Danny Hilfman's not the volcanologist I am, says Bronto. He's a volcanologist, and it's like, look, we don't care if you say, well, these came from this volcano from blah, 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 from three million years ago. We were like, that's kick-ass, and they took those rocks all the way over here and made the pyramid. Isn't that fantastic? Get out of here with your Vulcanologist stuff. Live long and prosper, Vulcan. I mean, it, it'd be good to get an idea of whenever that all happened and everything, but that doesn't make it so. He tells you it's the site of a neck of an ancient volcano. It's not even a pyramid. And carbon-dated cement between the stone is simply the byproduct of natural weathering processes, not man-made. 
<coughs> so now they're going to have to figure out and do a test again and go back into it. But during the same time now, the little group that runs this saying that he's wasting time and money that he could do some other archaeological sites and they've prematurely now turned him off of the site right but they're all saying that he's going to ruin the whole thing and everything and he goes man i've cut a couple of core sites into there fine where i've touched anything if you'll go up there but of course this is the the fight against things so we might look at a couple of these other sites here soon in another video. But uh, so um, started off from Hindu and Buddhism type of roots. And you can see that and that connection across through India and into these islands here. And so when you pick out the dates we talk about for that and this, they kind of correspond or go after each other too, don't they? Depending on if you give this one a 20,000 or only a 12,6 or a 9,5 or a 65 or what are you going to give it? So they're going to have to do that again but uh, here's another amazing picture of part of the top of it here and so they've re-stood up some of the doorways and things in this part. And there were people living up here during that time. And you know, monks or whatever's going on doing it. That's fantastic. They stood this one up too. And you can tell something's been moved. Who built the whole thing that's standing on? Who fixed it the second time? Who put this crap up here in the first place? And uh, who buried it in this much dirt? Because that doesn't happen naturally with the wind happening. In fact, erosion is what happens, and that's what's exposing the rest of it. So we're going to take a, a closer look at this whenever he gets back into it, which is supposed to happen sometime in a later part of this year, I heard, and I don't know whether to believe that or not. This is off of some, one of those guys that they call a pseudo-archaeologist. So you look at this picture here, and where we're looking at is right here. But I'm telling you, this area was totally connected, of course, during the last ice age and in fact so was this island and then here's Bali and it was too but they're saying no there's a break right here there's a break right there and Bali that meets right here is the only one just past that it never got quite deep enough what uh, by 70 80 foot there and oh 120 and a couple other places but really 80 foot and you'd cover a whole lot more and then you'd be just Gilligan's Islands apart from making the connection and one more view of Ganang Padang so it's not just like it comes up like a pyramid there's a whole top part of it this thing is huge and look at all this excess that used to have apparently been some kind of building that all fell in but it's been covered up and so they're starting to excavate it and certain areas but you can just come up here as a day visit and walk all around doing all kinds of things right now and that's fine it's not like it's a kept outside either oh my god did I go past 45 or am I there yeah I'm getting close to it so this is where Mu was there were a lot of people living in this area that don't no longer live in that area there's a look up at the size of it and they're telling you that from here from back we're standing on part of the built pyramid right now and then they built this up and they built that up and they built that up and 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 and there's that flat big ass thing up there Oh, it's like the Temple of the Sun, Mexico, but all made out of these little laca blocks that come from a special volcanic er type of eruption that, again, is like Giant's Causeway or the Devil's Punch Bowl or the uh, Devil's Tower. <laughs>